Ah, uh, hello folks, this is David Hurley of uh, Easy Chess Tips, your pub chess bluffer. Just about to indulge in some uh, Rosso Piceno from, uh, from the Marche region of Italy, I believe. Uh, certainly Italian, anyway. Cheers! Uh, and I'm going to report on uh, a game I played over the internet on Game Not Through Skype against my regular opponent, Dr. M, earlier this week, in which he was white and opened with e4. And I responded with d6 instead of e6. And next, I went straight into the middle, rather expecting the exchange, but the doc extended. He advanced his pawn to grab some space. And so I attacked his e-pawn with my knight, and he decided to pin my knight with his bishop. Yes, this is a fairly characteristic move of this opening. What did I do? I go for the early bishop to e7 instead, unpinning my queen. And we had... Now, this is something I missed, uh, and it's worth... Uh, studying, I think. In this position, it looks as if this knight is defending both this pawn, and this pawn appears to be strongly defended with the queen, the knight, and the bishop, uh, and the bishop, the queen, the knight, and the pawn. Um, but both uh, game not, uh, the game not post game analysis, and Lychess here recommend that um, the knight takes that e pawn and i don't think it's something it's certainly not something i spotted on my own i wasn't aware of it it looks kind of crazy but the key here is um the move order if we go back to that knight c3 move what does game not what does uh, lichess recommend lichess recommends that this knight is knocked out um giving up the bishop for the knight after all, these pinning moves do imply that the bishop is willing to go. Uh, white in this kind of situation is usually, is not usually, but is is uh, potentially willing to exchange off his bishop for the knight. Another possible move, uh, I think, would be knight to f3. Oh dear, the machine doesn't like it because it enables us simply to take the pawn so let's forget that okay not good not good at all so there we go knight to c3 was better than knight to f3 i don't think i'm very alert tonight i'm uh, i i think i need some inspiration mm. anyway getting back to this situation here let's have a look at what happens if this knight takes it looks crazy but we now have an on pre bishop if this knight takes this knight, what happens What happens if he does something else? Let's see what happens if he goes here. Our knight comes back. And so we have a nice advantage because now we have one, two, three minor pieces against three minor pieces. But we have won a pawn in the middle. So we have a nice center and nobbled an all-important central pawn. It's pretty much a free pawn. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I think we should uh, go back and have another look at that in this situation. Because this d6 opening, I like it. I like it. So he comes here and we can immediately, we didn't take, we can immediately take. What's going on here? Not that disastrous move. We can immediately take over here. And if this happens we just pick up the pawn in the middle. So we're a pawn ahead. What happens on the other hand if we take and oh, now, now Lightest is recommending that move. What happens if, if the knight takes? Then the bishop grabs the bishop. And so once again, we are a pawn up. There is a knight advanced here. But uh, we now have black has the bishop pair, and both bishops are, are active. So that looks very good for black. That is something to remember in this position. Um, 
it should be relatively easy to remember this pattern you've got you've got the uh, the two this you've got this um, uh, almost symmetrical position here almost symmetrical it's a little asymmetrical but um, a bit of a mirror image is operating there a bent mirror and from there when when white has brought his bishop down here and is not backed has not backed it up with anything it's a floating bishop then it allows the knight to attack that pawn to nobble that pawn in the middle let's do something crazy what happens if what happens if the queen takes it charge down there with the queen and you pick up the bishop so there we are no difference this is not dangerous here uh what happens if he uh, goes crazy and brings the, the brings the appears to be a, appears to be threatening uh checkmate by bringing the bishop over but there's a bold um, castle and this pawn is now nicely defended and black retains the advantage and tidies up his defensive system it seems so there we are that is something that i completely missed um, i was playing something along the lines of the old indian by bringing my my uh b knight to d7 here it still gives me a slight edge and on we go so we now had a uh, queen to uh, f3 and the machine doesn't like that at all again we can still pick up this central pawn this situation has not changed at all but i'm blind to that and i do that little c6 move attacking the center <laughs> i thought it was necessary to attack the center in this way ah the myopia of, of 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 the chess player of the of the pub chess bluffer he brings out his bishop i continue to attack that pawn which i could have just taken a few moves ago ah uh, uh he pulls back his bishop I attack his other bishop and now he nobbles and we get that exchange there develops the knight we castle now earlier earlier on the queenside castle was an optional move for white but um the game not post analysis uh marked the queenside castle at this stage as a mistake now i don't think i took great advantage of this as a mistake I immediately got in a cheap check um, that was marked as a mistake by the game not uh, post game analysis not a blunder just uh, not the best line of play I decide now that I mean I have a general rule of thumb that uh, when we cast on opposite sides it's not really my rule of thumb it's a common rule of thumb um, as soon as you see the your opponent uh, cast on the opposite side you you send in an attack so up goes my a a my a pawn however it didn't really get anywhere it pushes the bishop back but that's still a good diagonal that bishop is on this is a bad move this i'm trying to open up the center it's a bad move and yeah i should have closed off i should have created what charlie story calls the bermuda triangle structure though the white pawn is backward um because there's this nasty line down here to pay attention to um i said the bishop was on a nice diagonal it's a diagonal that's pointing straight to the king and by leaving this pawn here white at any time can get in a nice um check a nice uh, with tempo check if this pawn so when this pawn advances it opens that door for this option here and so f5 a very bad move but my opponent did not take advantage of the situation and instead 
G3 comes in. So there's a bit of a recovery for me. I still haven't noticed, it seems, the problem I put myself in. Oh, perhaps I have noticed. I'm just going for a quick um, attack on the queen. Nobble that middle pawn. Um, open up my rook file. I feel that if I take a center pawn for one for an F pawn, I've gained something. Uh, the engine <laughs> is in two minds about that. No, maybe it's decided I haven't gained very much at all. But I've got to advance that pawn. And now, finally, I do. So that, that solidifies my center. H, H4 comes in, attacking my bishop. I move my bishop all the way back. F4. Now, the, my knight move here is not ideal when it comes in. I get the attack in on the queen, trying to get, trying to find a nice diagonal for my bishop. Then this, I'm trying to reroute my knight and also open up the path to get this pawn moving as well. However, a better move would have been to hop into this hole here and see if I can pin that knight to the rook or force the rook to move. But I rerouted my knight or attempted to. And now this is the best piece, best bit of counterplay, I think, that white gets in. White's on a bit of a pawn storm against my king. Again, when kings are castled on opposite sides of the board, pawn storms often develop. So here my opponent is developing a bit of a pawn storm can I hold out? I indeed retreat my bishop to um, to uh, h7. I do like that diagonal. And you can see the ideal pawn to bring in would be this f pawn. Advance it. It's nicely supported by the g pawn, which is defended by the queen. And it closes that diagonal off, closing down uh, black's the black bishop's options or room for maneuver but and i think this is this is a mistake well i know it's a mistake um you see a bit of recovery for black on the on the advantage bar it's the wrong pawn advancing i was quite happy to see that pawn advance and i'm going to give my bishop a bit of air space though um yeah, the the computer engines don't like it very much. And hope that my opponent grabs the pawn, which indeed he does. And I happily take it back. And he brings in his rook. That's fine. I'm going to bring in my rook. And he moves the queen, but he doesn't move the queen the way recommended by Lychess, the Lychess engine. Yes, I do grab that rook. I think at this stage I'm a pawn up, so I don't mind swapping off material. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, I'm not a pawn up. Okay. Uh, oh, now I'm a pawn up. Uh, the pawn, pawn up is here. Okay, I grab a pawn. If you're wondering why the queen doesn't take it, well, <laughs> it would be disaster. So. The queen comes into f3, not coming behind uh, to e3. The queen to f3 gives black, or seems to give black, a small advantage. Because black can quite happily take this pawn. Uh, let's see what I did. Ah, uh, I faffed around. <laughs> so black can take this pawn. Let's have a look at what happens if black takes this pawn. And the queen comes in here, which is where I'm heading to with my queen anyway, pinning pinning the knight to the queen. It's all a bit all a bit uh, a bit complex at that stage. So I bring my my queen straight into f3. The knight ah okay yes that 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 is one reason why it's not the best move right now. I bring my queen straight into f3. And the knight can simply attack the queen, and the queen should probably just go back. However, I didn't want to just move my queen back, so I decided now as I have a small material advantage, I'd swap off, though, though it was a pity to lose that bishop on that nice diagonal. 
Uh, this is another poor move. I'm trying to get that. I'm trying to get something moving on the queen side, um, but it's not well timed. If if white plays the ideal moves or strong moves, however, as this is the pub chess bluffer approach, you see, it's not a great move, but it pulls. And this is this is the first real blunder. It pulls the knight over. This is a piece of pure pub chess bluffery. So we'll we'll toast this uh, this move, a move that um, no respectable player would play, and no chess engine would play it. But it's a pub chess bluffer move. Yeah. So here I drink to uh, b4. B4 does his job. It pulls the knight off this square, defending this pawn. The pawn seems to be defended by the queen, but there are two. The pawn is being attacked by a pawn and a queen and being defended by the knight and the queen. This is an important pawn, more important than my B pawn. So we run up the board with the B pawn saying, come on, come on, baby, light my fire. And sure enough, the knight comes over. A pub chess bluffer's bluff has paid off. And so we get it in there. Yes. And now it seems like it's a nice exchange, but the knight is off. The knight is off base. The knight is out of position right now. However, I still don't play that ideal and rather nice looking move. Get my knight up into the middle. I decide simply to attack the knight. But ha, huh, what we have in this attack on the knight is a hidden threat of checkmate. So what should he do? The knight can't move. Um, rather bold move is to bring the rook straight down and attack the queen. The rook will be defended by the queen. And we're not in a position to spring our trap just yet. And there's nowhere to go on that diagonal except to swap off queens. So that would have been a nice strong move. That's uh, that that takes that takes a bit of guts that does that kind of move. But what happened in our game? Yeah, the bishop comes in to defend the knight, shore up the position, and now I still don't bring it. Still don't bring in that knight. I thought I brought my knight in. Obviously, the knight wants to come in here to boot the bishop off. But I'm concerned about the hole here, so I close the hole by bringing my, my bishop in. Not strictly necessary, according to the chess engine, compared to this rather nice move of the knight in here. So what happens next? The bishop moves back and is indeed threatening a checkmate of his own a wobbly checkmate there but that would be checkmate so is the pub chess bluffer about to be pub chess bluffed not that this was a pub chess game it was a it was a an online game in in uh, self -is social isolation or whatever it was called it's called social distancing yes it was a socially distant game of chess through skype OK, so what we're going to do to counter that checkmate threat, we're going to bring our bring our knight down. Yay, knight down onto the back rank. So although it probably would have been better to have moved him up there, I was keeping my knight in reserve just against such a threat. We've got these two squares nicely guarded now. And so how does this develop? So white through this period has this small but significant advantage can grab a pawn but he doesn't grab a pawn he opens up ah yes well what black sorry what white is trying to do is make it more difficult is is trying to prevent the queen from uh getting in at his king but this is a mistake as we will see a little bit later this is a mistake what do we do? 
we're making a run for promotion, which the engine doesn't like. But this is, again, the kind of thing that your pub chess bluffer likes to spring on his opponent. The, ah, this is the move which is the mistake. The knight comes down to uh, trying to find a threat down here. But in doing so, once again, the knight opens up this threat here, which means that this pawn cannot move. The pawn is pinned to the king, which means my queen can simply pick up this pawn here. So I was very happy to see this move. And indeed, that is what I did. Seeing his mistake, he hops back to shut that stable door. And I bring my queen back. So the same threat comes back in again. Uh, the same double attack on uh, b2 through the closed door of the knight here. So the knight's kind of pinned to that pawn. Uh, rook to f1 to try and stop my, my pawn. It appears there's a double attack on the pawn, but I can just advance the pawn. And now the crisis hits. So my opponent brings back the queen. I hop the bishop in to protect my pawn. He brings his rook over to attack my bishop. I bring my bishop back. This move was not strictly necessary. Um, here's a better move. Advancing the, advancing the knight um, protected by the queen and the knight itself is protecting the bishop. I wonder though if the bishop takes the knight. Let's have a little. Let's have, let's explore this option here. The engine doesn't want to. The engine wants to restore that threat of checkmate down there. Possibly seeking to exchange queens. I quite like restoring the checkmate threat here. If the bishop takes the knight, and the queen takes the ah, oh, it will be check. And so this bishop does not fall. Okay, so I did not do, I did not move my knight to g6. Instead, I moved the queen up to g5. What I'm looking for is a way through. If the, if the again, if the knight, if the rook takes the bishop, the queen can come through here and check the king, and all is probably going well. But it's not great. You see, it brings us back to parity. So it looks like I did lose my advantage again. Um, the knight nobbles that. The knight nobbles the pawn. And the queen comes in now and says, right, come on, let's get on with it. So queen comes in looking to exchange effectively a rook for a pawn. Uh, my opponent's queen steps in. And so I decided to retreat back. And now we've got that open line. We're ready. This is now the checkmate threat coming in again. So my opponent needs to look after that. And he brings his knight. Why did he bring his knight there and not there? What does the... Why not simply return the knight to here? The queen to protect against checkmate there. What happens if he brings his knight here? Ah, if he brings his knight here, that is a huge mistake. Yes, I remember now from, not because I saw it, but from the game not analysis. The rook comes over here. He's, he's, he's um, left this square unguarded. And so then now this is a huge threat. If the rook comes up here, check and the queen falls so moving moving the knight away at all from this square here has suddenly become a bad thing to do but my opponent was trying to defend against checkmate with the knight instead of the queen i didn't i didn't see this particular move what i did instead was advance my queen i've now got both pieces protecting the the pawn and I, I, I felt I was building up my advantageous position. It certainly is an advantage, but this was the great move here, coming across here. I don't. I've, I've got my. I'm fixed on this this pattern here. Certainly a strong pattern. 
but the knight is now protecting. So now the pressure is on and time is running. Actually, we won't, we're not playing the clock. When we play, we don't play to a clock. So there's actually, I can't use that good old, that good old chestnut of an excuse that we were running out of time. Uh, Queen comes in, and that is the final blunder of the game. The Queen moves away from defending the Bishop, and down goes the Bishop, and the game is pretty much wrapped up. Bring my Bishop in to attack the Queen. The Queen takes the Bishop. At first, it looked like I'd made a huge mistake, but the problem for White is that I, I cannot take the queen with my rook with with my pawn because the white rook is pinning the pawn to the king. However, all I need to do now is indeed uh, promote my pawn. If the rook takes, the queen takes, and it will be curtains. It's curtains anyway. The queen comes back. What happened? Ah, the rook takes the 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 promoted pawn queen. My queen takes the rook. And the king moves into hiding, but there's a big hole in his fortification. It looks here as if I can just pick up the queen, but there's no point. I don't need to pick up the queen because this is checkmate coming right now. That way or the other way, whichever way it is checkmate, don't need to waste time taking the queen. So there we are. That's how we played out a rather lengthy 50-move game full of errors and mistakes and the occasional blunder, but a lot of fun, and especially when a bit of pub chess bluffery did the good old trick. Okay, folks, that's all for me, David Hurley of EasyChessTips.com, your pub chess bluffer.